Way back in 1864, a group of local cricketers met over there in what is now a world famous pub, the Turf. Now they met to discuss the possibility of creating what is now known as Wrexham AFC. Those cricketers wanted a sport to play in the winter months, which is quite baffling to understand in this current climate. It's pissing it down today, guys. But being formed over there at the turf in 1864 makes Wrexham AFC the third oldest professional football club in the world. And today, ladies and gents, we have the pleasure of touring the racecourse ground known as Stock K Ras. Apologies, I've got Welsh blood in me and I still can't pronounce any Welsh words. But we're here for a stadium tour. Before we do the stadium tour, if you are new to the channel, we do loads of stadium tours, pretty much more than one a week on the channel. Apologies for the stuttery camera as well. It is so windy here, but we're going to be here learning a bit about Wrexham, as we always do, learn a bit about the club. We tend to do a 360 of the exterior of the ground we're visiting. We tend to pop into the club shop and buy something and then obviously hop on the stadium tour, which we're going to be doing today. I'm not going to get too much into Welcome to Wrexham. Obviously, if you've been living under a rock, um, you might have not heard. Wrexham have a world famous documentary series. There's already been two series of Welcome to Wrexham with a third series coming this year in 2024. Obviously that documents their celebrity ownership, Ryan Reynolds and Rob McElhenney. McElhenney, can never say his name right. But today, we're not gonna talk too much about that documentary because everyone else has covered it. And I'll be honest, I've only seen the first series, so I don't know too much myself. But let's delve into the facts. Let's search deep about the history of this glorious club. Ladies and gents, hit that like button, subscribe if you're new, and let's wander around the race course. Let's go. Right then, guys, I'm sure my commitment to the channel today, because it is relentless rain, incredible wind, but that's not going to stop me, because Wrexham have been playing here at the race course ground since their birth date, since that famous meeting in the Turf pub. This is also the ground in which Wales have played the most international games. They played their very first international home game here all the way back in 1877. I'm looking to the side because I've got a, a sheet full of notes for you guys. Behind us here is obviously the famous Cop End. We'll get on to that in a moment. So let's head over that way and talk about that famous cop end. Let's go. Right then guys, so apologies for somewhat of a unesthetic stop. We're gonna get to far more beautiful parts of the stadium. There's a method to the madness. The reason I'm here, it mentions demolition. Now obviously I keep harping on about this temporary stand behind. The original stand was demolished last year, I think in 2023, but this or what was the old cop that stood there for many years was at one point the largest all terracing terrace stand in the Football League. But from 2008 to 2023, it was unused. We went to Edgar Street, my hometown, hometown of Hereford. We spoke about the Blackfriars end not currently being used because it's unsafe. A similar thing happened here at the racecourse ground. So the, the, the stand just stood there from 2008 to 2023, completely unused. Then. The council gave them the green light to demolish it and put up the temporary stand that's there now. So according to my notes, even though Wrexham have played here since 1864, the race course dates back way before 1864. Obviously we mentioned the cricket club that set up the football club. Now that cricket team played here, there was horse racing here amongst various other activities. I even read somewhere that they were flying planes, whether that's true, take that with a pinch of salt, never use Wikipedia for your resource of information. But since 1807, apparently sporting activities have been happening here. Wikipedia's also got the current capacity for the ground as 12,600. Again, pinch of salt with the temporary stand. Again, as I uh, 
glance at my notes, there's so much, there's so much history involved around Wrexham AFC. We all get caught up in the documentary, all the modern hype, all their newfound American fans and so on. But I really, really want to get to the nitty gritty today, learn about the club long before that famous takeover. So just to get your bearings, the Wally with the Brolly is going to kind of show you what's around the cop. Directly behind it, you've got the railway track over here. Looks to be a train station. You've got the Wrexham University over there. And obviously you can slightly see in the distance these floodlights and that uncovered temporary standing. Now we recently did an Amex stadium tour in Brighton and we visited the Withdean Stadium, their, old, their athletics ground they played at for a while. And we spoke about the temporary stands there and how fans would get absolutely soaked when watching games, but they put up with it because the club was in a dire state previously. Now Wrexham have obviously faced loads of issues over the years, relegations, in the 2000s led to them facing liquidation. So all this stuff happening now is just a massive improvement on what some of the fans were experiencing in those dark days. So I'm pretty sure the fans who attend Wrexham games sat over there in those uncovered temporary seats on a day like today, getting absolutely soaked. They're not gonna be moaning too much because they've seen a lot worse. Right then guys, so obviously cop end over there. We've made our way over to the Wrexham Lager stand. Wrexham Lager being probably Wrexham's most famous sponsor, more so than TikTok, for you new fans. Nothing much to see here. Again, remember, we are on a stadium tour, so we're going to get a closer look at everything around the ground. So I am a bit of an idiot because we were just behind that fence over there, guys. But behind me over here, the Centenary Club, I believe is where the tour starts. I'm not sure if I have got my bearings right because the Wrexham Lager Stand, did I say that earlier? Or, or is Wikipedia wrong? The Wrexham Lager Stand also hosts the club shop as well. The Wrexham Club Shop is just behind me over there. So we're gonna walk past the club shop, finish up around the front, which I think is the Macron Stand. Right then guys, before we go back to the Macron stand, over there on the wall, you've got images of what the COP development will look like. There's um, notices all over the ground actually, over there, COP development. So hopefully the development won't be delayed too long and hopefully that um, COP temporary stand won't stand for too long because you hear it all the time, don't you? The temporary stand is only temporary, but it ends up being there for years and years and years. Last but not least, guys, before we get to the Macron stand, you've got the Stock Cold Brew Coffee Stand. I think I'm saying it all right. It's got one of those umlaut things. Stuck, stock, stuck. They sponsor pretty much the whole stadium, but this stand in particular, this is obviously opposite the cop end, um, to the side again, the Wrexham Lager stand, and then back out on the main road, where we're going in a moment, the Macron stand. I've used Wikipedia again as my point of reference um, for this video, guys, so take everything I say with a pinch of salt. Any mistakes I make, let us know in the comments below. Let's finish up with that final stand, get back in the car uh, and warm up because I'm bloody freezing. Let's go. mention as well guys that one of Wrexham's nicknames is the, the Red Dragon and you've got a Red Dragon over there. <laughs> right so I've escaped the rain for the burger. Right guys, so I've escaped the rain for the burger van opposite the ground and I was pleasantly surprised to see that the 
the people running the van are the same people running the turf. The famous ones from the Welcome to Wrexham documentary series. Very chatty, very pleasant people, down to earth type, like we like. But another pleasantry was the fact that you could get an all day breakfast stack for only five Great British pounds. It looked fantastic. Just look at that guys. Bacon, sausage, egg, mushrooms. It's all going on. If you're watching this from overseas, maybe you're one of the new Wrexham fans, this summarizes the Great British breakfast in bat form. Oh wow, beautiful. I've just seen there's a bloody Ash Brown in there as well. Look at that. My love, there's only you in my life. Right then guys, back outside the Wrexham Lager stand. That of course has the club shop in it. Let's spend some hard earned money. Let's get the cash out, let's go. guys so I've got two items from the club shop just spoke with the lovely people in the shop very friendly as I'd have uh, presumed they would be and I spoke to the guy who's doing the stadium tour so yes the St. Tenery uh, club suite whatever it's called we've got an hour an hour to kill so what I'm gonna do rather than carry on walking around in the rain sitting in my car eating breakfast baps let's get in the world famous turf let's have a pint in Wrexham's local Let's go. There we go then. Cracking point in the turf. Most some friendly people, I know I've said it before, but thoroughly enjoyable. I've just seen as well that they do the turf merchandise. So I might have to get something else for the man cave. By the way, that, those two items I did buy from the club shop will reveal at the end of the video. So guys, as you probably gathered, I filmed this last Wednesday and this past weekend, Wrexham have been promoted from League Two to League One. Double promotion, got promoted last season. Will they make the Premier League? Everyone's quite adamant that they'll probably plateau at some point, but I don't know. The Wrexham momentum keeps on building, so congratulations to Wrexham and of course Stockport County, who have also been promoted from League Two into League One. I missed a trick there. I also missed a trick missing out on going to Germany and seeing Bayer Leverkusen win the Bundesliga title for the very first time. But remember, I've not been to Germany since like 2007, I think it was, when I went to Berlin. But we will be in Germany, not this weekend, next weekend, as we tick so many German clubs off the list, including the new Bundesliga champions, Bayer Leverkusen. We're going to be based in Cologne. We're going to see FC Cologne, Cologne, however you want to say it. We're going to be at Dortmund repping the retro shirt. We're going to be at their rival Schalke. We're going to be at Borussia Mönchengladbach. We're going to be at so many clubs when we go to Germany, not this weekend, next weekend. And remember, I'm no longer a milkman. I've gone part-time. I'm currently working every Monday night, 
Tuesday night, Wednesday night, and I'm going to be live streaming every Thursday night. We also offer now memberships, guys, to Softspot FC. Oh, yes, for only £5 a month, Softspot FC members will get exclusive content, early access to videos, and so much more. More information on that on the live stream this Thursday. <laughs> if you want to follow this way through the ice, what up there? Oh, there she is. Yeah, please feel free to take pictures, etc. We are next to the active this way as well, so we'll be able to see. This is the National League Trophy in the family. Feel free to take some pictures. So just an update on the temporary stand. The new stand is going to be double the capacity. At the moment, there's two and a half thousand. It's going to be around 5,000. But obviously, if they do get promoted and building does commence on that stand this summer, they're obviously going to be left without the stand. So that's a big attendance to be out with uh, for League One football, isn't it? So they're not quite sure 100% if the new stand is going to start in the summer but it will take around 12 months to complete, maybe just under. If you look at those pictures again though, it's gonna look absolutely fantastic. And apparently, once they've done that, they can start working on this and they can start working on the one opposite over there. But unfortunately, there is one place we can't go today and that's Rob and Ryan's suite up there in the Macron stand. Unfortunately, it's the one place we're not allowed to go. But their seats apparently up there are really, really thick, high quality. The best seats used to be the ones we were just in up there. But um, obviously since the takeover, that's all changed. Now off to the cop, the temporary stand. Just a reminder, that's the goal in which Ben Foster saved that famous penalty last season in the cop end. Yeah! 
this over here guys is known as the quiet zone um, basically a section of seats that's allocated to those with certain disabilities maybe autism or something like that whereby they need a bit more space so if you are watching on the telly and you do see a few spare seats over in this uh, corner of the macaron stand that's why chances are it is a sellout they're just deliberately left Just a reminder that Wrexham beat Arsenal in 1992 in the FA Cup and Arsenal were the current First Division champions. So this stand over here, the stock one, is where the drummer will be. That's really weird because it's a nice, charming, quirky stadium, ground. Uh, everything we, we like here on Rice Football Paradise, but when you see the glamour, the Hollywood, Rob and Ryan kind of aspect to Wrexham, you forget they were going through some tough times. Now this is the away dressing room, we don't go into there because it's, it's for the, we're going to the home dressing room next. Um, as it says there above the door, the oldest international football stadium in the world is still in use. And as I said earlier, um, Sheffield Hallam. Yeah, not professional, yeah. Where's the rack for the Stuck that up there. It's all mine, mate. Yeah, okay. Oh, wow. Don't touch it. It's okay. Don't touch it. 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 Thanks very much. Well then guys, what a good tour that was. The only couple of places we couldn't go in were obviously Rob and Ryan's suite at the top of the Macron stand and also the away changing room. But confirmation here on my little certificate, the world's oldest international football stadium. So there we go, we've done the world's oldest professional stadium. We've done the world's oldest professional club. We've done the world's oldest club in general, Sheffield FC. And now we've done the world's oldest international stadium. So we're ticking grounds off one by one here on Rice Football Paradise. So if you are new, make sure you do subscribe. We do all kinds of stadium tours. This was one of the better ones. Finishes up, as you'd expect, by the club shop. Obviously, we bought two items already. So let's head back to the car now and see exactly what we bought earlier on from the club shop.
Let's go. Hang on, hang on. Before we get to the car, um, there is the turf. We need to maybe get something from the turf as well, an extra souvenir to celebrate this tour. But also, those who are subscribed will know I love a corner of a football stadium. I'm not going to get that excited because we've just been inside, but there you go. You've got a gorgeous, che cheeky glimpse in between these two stands over here. So if you are passing by, you can have a look through these gates. And if you're a bit of a weirdo like me, you might get a bit aroused, who knows? One thing which is gonna get my juices flowing is a piece of merchandise from the turf. Three items from one visit. I'm gonna need to start increasing my earnings, guys, on YouTube. Spread the word about the channel before these tours bankrupt me. Hello. Oh, yeah. Um, do you have any of the, the turf slates left to, to sell? Right guys, so I've joked that I've spent loads of money, but to be fair, I think I've spent, spent wisely because in total, I've only spent 40 pounds. 25 in the club shop, 15 in the turf. I'm gonna leave that turf item to the end. So what did we get from the Wrexham club shop? So I did mention that we're collecting these now, the names the signs with football ground names on. So obviously you've got the Welsh, basically um, stock race course ground. It's gonna look good in the man cave. We've got a couple already. Let's build the collection of these up. Really happy with this, 15 pound. So sort of the going rate, same price as what Kenilworth Road charged for theirs. Before we get onto the next one, this uh, certificate by the way is in English on this side and in Welsh on the other side. And it's also signed by Phil Parkinson himself, I'm guessing. He's even put the date on. There we go, Wrexham manager has signed my tour. That's going to be worth a lot of money in the future, I'm sure, when Wrexham reach the Premier League. It's a bit of a cliche, but obviously we're in Wales, so I thought it's appropriate. I can say it because I've got Welsh blood. I'm a Williams, that's my surname. I've got a sheep, a Rex Wrexham sheep. I've got the branding on there, looks really nice. Now, I think they've undercharged me for this because this is 15 quid. So common sense would say 15 plus 15 equals 30. Whether it's because I was on the stadium tour and I got discount, I don't know. But she only charged me 25 quid. So I've, I've either been lucky or you do get a stadium tour discount. Looks good. Again, going to be on show in the man cave. We're going to run out of uh, room soon. Remember, we do live stream every week normally, apart from this week because we're rebranding the live streams. The exact date will be revealed in the next couple of days, so make sure you are subscribed. Follow us on Instagram, at Roy's Footy Paradise. Photo slate, it does come with a stand. It's the same as the one on show behind the bar, if you do happen to pass by. So you've got, oh shit, gorgeous slate. Look at that, the turf. It's done in a really nice way. It's not just a slate, it's glossy. Established 1840. So again, the turf, the pub. I think the turf was a hotel, wasn't it? It's older than bloody Wrexham. What was Wrexham? 1864. The turf, 1840. Wowzers. We're literally amongst football history here, guys. And I've really enjoyed this tour. As I was kind of getting at earlier on, it's easy to get caught up in the glitz and glamour of the Hollywood owners. It's easy to forget that Wrexham have very much had their struggles over the years. But rather than come here and say the ground does look a bit tired, because it does, it does look a bit tired, a bit worn out. There's things you can pick holes in, but let's not forget the last season, they were a non-league club. They're in the, the National League. We need to put things in perspective as to relative to where Wrexham were prior to the takeover. I love these stadium tours the most. I want to get to more tours on grounds which aren't Premier League clubs, because Premier League grounds pretty much look similar, glossy. They show you what, what they want to show you. This was no smoke and mirrors. I would have liked to see the away changing room. I think it probably would have been a bit of a mess. That seems to be a theme with all the away changing rooms we've seen on Rise Football Paradise. They don't tend to take much care of the away changing rooms. But ladies and gents, hope you've enjoyed the video. If you did, again, remember, stick the thumbs up and I'll see you in one of these videos surrounding me over here. We've done loads of tours lately, Borough, Barnsley, Brighton. They don't all begin with B. I will see you in one of those videos. See you later, guys.